let's begin at the beginning. And the beginning would be that we are studying human anatomy, but you're also going to be typically studying human physiology. And so let's define these two words. Anatomy is the study of the structure of living things. It's particularly looking at the parts, the structures, the elements that come together <clears throat> to make a physical living thing. Now the word is kind of used in other places. People may talk about the um, anatomy of an automobile engine or the anatomy of a washing machine. You know, you can, you can talk about, you can sort of use this biological word in other ways, but we, um, it is a biological word. And so much of what we're going to be doing in class is going to be anatomy, of course. Physiology is a word referring to the function of living things, how things work, the processes, the activities, collectively the functions of living things. And we're going to try and make a case for the fact that structure determines function. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that as well. Now, the way I want to phrase this is this. I want us to be able to say to ourselves, structure determines function. Now, think about that for a minute, please. What we're saying, really, is things behave, they act, they perform, they work according to their structure, the way they're built. Isn't this true? Um, how about things that swim? Here's a fish. You naturally think of a fish as being able to swim, but here's some birds that swim. Here's some mammals that swim. Right? But they all have similar body styles. They all have similar structures. If they're going to swim effectively, there's going to be certain structural characteristics that they're going to share. How about things that fly? Well, we always think that birds fly, of course, but there are other things that fly, right? There's even a fish that flies. I guess it doesn't really fly, but it glides. There are animals that glide. There's animals that fly. There's mammals that fly. They're, they're able to do that because they have the structure. I don't fly very well. If I jump out of a tree like a flying squirrel, I fall. I don't glide very well. Although, have you seen this? There, there are people that do this gliding thing. Did you, have you seen that? I saw it on TV the other day. They, and they, this is what they look like, don't they? They wear this suit that has all of this, you know, this cloth between their arms and their legs, and they jump off cliffs. They have a, they have a parachute to catch them at the very end, but they jump off, and then they just glide, you know, some cliff that's like 1,000, 2,000 feet up, and they just, they glide down over the, oh, it was crazy. That's what they looked like. They looked like a flying squirrel. Their eyes were big. Yeah, their eyes were that big, yeah. Right? Think of it in terms of your everyday world, right? Um, here's your, maybe your washing machine, right? Are you going to bake a cake in that? It's not designed for it, is it? It doesn't have the parts. It doesn't have the structure to perform this other activity. What about something like a hair dryer? Are you going to try to vacuum the rug with that? <laughs> no. Right? Things are structured for certain activities. Um, you know, this in, in just everything in our world, right? The, the computer that you probably use at home for email or whatever. Every part in that has some purpose for the good of the whole. Everything contributes to the overall activity of that. Both parts that are internal that you can't see and parts that are external. If I can see the inside, if I can see all the parts of the washing machine, you know, if I see water coming in, I can start thinking, well, there must be hoses, there must be a water supply, there must be some valve that starts and stops the water. 
Structure is really the key to so much of the rest of what we try to do, what we try to understand. If you go back in time, so much of what the human body does was a mystery. You know, people, people used to experiment on human bodies to try and figure out how they did what they did. But for ages, it was a mystery. Why? Because we couldn't see structure. We could see organs. We could see gross parts of the body. But how does a heart do what it does? How does a muscle contract? How does a stomach digest? It's a very hard thing to figure out when you're just looking at the macro of it, the, the large parts of it. But how do these things perform what they do? Right? Structure determines function. When I can see the structure, then it's so much more easy for me to understand how it works. And the same way then we say anatomy is going to help determine physiology. We take anatomy first before we take physiology because it would be very hard to understand how something works if you don't know what it looks like, if you don't know what its parts are, if you don't know the structure of it. And the other way around, structure really illuminates that. 